Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to fully use and utilize the nano editor. All right. So for those of you who are asking me constantly to make a video on how to essentially get the most out of the nano editor, here you go. Now, uh, for all of my early, uh, my early subscribers who started off with me just, you know, with, with one of my first videos on Linux, uh, when I did actually start using Nano, if you remember in my first video, uh, I actually started using VI or Vim, which is what a lot of you guys seem to prefer for whatever reason. It is a very powerful editor, no doubt about that. Uh, and I'll explain why uh, Nano is very important to, to, to learn how to use and uh, how to master. So uh, for those of you who actually watched that video, you, you did know that the reason I use Nano in all my videos is because I want all my videos to, uh, to essentially have no barrier uh, for entry when it comes down to students. So someone can easily just watch it and get started without any uh, tinkering or without learning how to use uh, an editor. All right, so it's really about the topic of the video. Now, that being said, uh, Nano is a fantastic editor, very lightweight, very easy to understand. And I'll be taking you through uh, all the um, the shortcuts, all, all the, the, uh, the key bindings that are used and that'll make things a whole lot easier because a lot of you guys have been asking me how to copy files, how to paste files, how to cut files, uh, how to search for different uh, words or how to search for uh, how to move to different lines uh, of code. So yes, it is a fully functional editor and it does have some of the best features that one would expect from an editor. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, Nano is uh, pretty much pre-installed on Kali Linux. If you are using this on Ubuntu, I'm not too sure if it is installed on Ubuntu, but it can be installed by using the, uh, the aptitude package manager. So sudo apt get install nano now of course i already have it installed and this will pretty much be installed on any linux server that you ever use uh, you will find nano always installed but vi or vim is a somewhat of a custom tool that one brings in uh, mainly for productivity and of course as i mentioned we'll be moving on to using vi but i want to have this video out there for those of you who like using nano as well there is no shame in using nano it's a fantastic editor that gets uh, all the work done. So what I've done is I've created a nano directory in which I'm going to be working in. So uh, let's get started with that. So uh, nano can be opened by simply typing a uh, nano as, as as you've seen right over here. And I'm running uh, 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 nano version 3.2. And over here, it'll give you uh, a bit of information in regards to the buffer that you've just created. So for example, uh, you can go ahead and look at the, the bindings that they do give you uh, at the bottom right of here, which are quite uh, important or quite helpful, but they don't really explain much. Now, of course, they do give you the options here to check out for the basic help, which is uh, can be brought up by using the control plus G uh, uh, keyboard binding. So you can go ahead and check that out. So uh, I've essentially opened up nano and I can type in whatever I want. It can be code, it can be text, whatever really I want to uh, to essentially uh, put into this editor I can. So I can just say, you know, something like um, nano is great, you know, something really uh, dumb and generic like that. And uh, once I want to save the file, as you already know, I use the control plus O uh, keys on my keyboard and then I'll then prompt you to actually uh, give the file a name and the extension that you want to use. So for example, I can say, let's just call this file.txt. But uh, I can also move a bit further from there and I can call it file.c. It can be a C, uh, a, a, a C file. So it all depends on what you want to save it as. And also that will depend on whether or not you have code in it. It'll be really stupid if I did save uh, text in a C file because that's not what really, uh, that's not what C files are there for. So uh, you get the idea and the context. It's very, very basic stuff here. So I can hit enter and it's going to save it. Now, when you want to exit the editor, you use the control plus X key on your keyboard. All right. And that should uh, exit from the uh, from the buffer, essentially. And if you have any unsaved changes, it should prompt you to save them or to discard them, depending on what you want. And that is usually den denoted by the yes or no answer. All right. So if I list the files, you can see that we have the file uh, right over here that we created. All right, now what I can do if I want to open an already existing file is I can say nano and I specify the file name or the directory if it is in a particular directory. So I can say, uh, I can say for example, uh, nano uh, etsy uh, and I can specify the proxy chains file for example. So you get the idea, all right? So in this case, let's start off with the file.txt right over here and we'll open it up and the text still remains. All right, now if I wanted to open up another file from within the editor, that is again very, very simple. So let's say I'm editing one file and I want to move on to the next one. 
uh, I can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create one more file here. I'm just going to uh, say nano uh, and we'll create, a f uh, we'll just call it test.txt uh, and we'll just hit enter and I'll just enter some random data. You can just say, uh, yep, uh, vi is also great or vim is also great. Uh, I'm more accustomed to calling it uh, vi. So it's all dependent on you. Anyway, so uh, let me exit and I'm going to open up the file.txt file right over here and let's say I wanted to open up another file within nano so I can say for example uh, all you need to do is hit control plus r all right and that'll prompt you for the file name and uh, the file name that we we did open is text or that we that we do want to open is text.txt I'm going to hit enter and there we are it um, it opens up the data and displays it for us within the same buffer of course uh, changing buffers is uh, is all dependent on whether or not you leave one buffer currently active and uh, you move to the next one. I'll show you how to you, you can essentially switch uh, between buffers by using the alt, uh, the alt and the greater than uh, sign or the less than sign to essentially switch between buffers. All right, so I'm just going to hit control plus X. Now, of course, it's going to tell us to save the modified bu buffer because we've opened a file within the current editor, which means the text uh, vim is also great. Is also going to be put within uh, the file.txt file, which is uh, we would not want that to happen. So I'm going to hit no. All right. So that is essentially how to open up files uh, within Nano. All right. Now, when we talk about copying and pasting data, which is what a lot of you guys have been asking me so for, so we're going to use the Nano, uh, Nano, and uh, we're simply going to open up the uh, file.txt right over here, and we'll enter a bit more text. So we're going to say vi is also great. All right. And uh, now a lot of you guys are tell, asking me, how do I essentially copy uh, data and how do I select a, a region of data? Really? That's what you're asking me. So uh, if I wanted to copy, uh, if I wanted to copy the word, uh, for example, um, we can say nano, for example, if I wanted to copy or let's say I wanted to copy great. So what I would need to do is uh, essentially when selecting the region of text or data that I want to copy, uh, all I need to do is use the alt A. And that will tell you that the marker has been set. And then you can use your arrows here to select the, the data that you want to copy. All right. Now, once you've selected the data or the region of data that you want to copy, you then use the alt and the uh, the power sign. All right. Now, I'll be putting up the, the keyboard bindings on, uh, on, on the screen right now so you can actually understand what keys I'm using. And that will copy the data. All right. And I can just go down right over here and I can also say uh, VS code is also and paste in uh, the the uh, the word great now to do that I can simply to, to paste data that you've copied all you need to do is uh, use the keyboard bindings control U and it should paste the data that you copied all right now those of you who are asking how do you cut data cutting data is very very simple we use the uh, we, we essentially need to it's, it's very simple we select the region of data and instead of copying we cut it now for copying uh, it is uh, alt and uh, the the greater than well not really the greater than sign uh, the the power of sign uh, or the the power of symbol uh, for cutting we use the control plus k all right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this region right over here so alt a I'm going to select this and we use the control k to cut that and of course uh, I actually uh, I forgot to cut t all right so let, let me just do that one more time uh, so we're going to say alt a I'm just going to copy that right over here and uh, control K right over here. And again, we can then paste it just at the bottom right over here. All right. So to do that again, you simply type in control and U and that will paste out the data for you. All right. Now, when you talk about other uh, important functionality, essentially navigating through data or code. So for example, if I can just uh, navigate to one of my uh, scripts here, uh, do I want to save the modified buffer? No, I do not. All right. So let me just move a step back here and move into my C scripts folder. If I just list the files in here, we have the reverse shell that, it, that we did work on. So I'm just going to open up that right over here. Nano reverse shell. And uh, now if I'm searching or let's actually talk about moving to the top and the bottom of, uh, of, of, the, of your pieces of code. So to the top and bottom of, of your file. All right. So to move to the top or the beginning of the file, you use the alt and the backslash. All right. So alt and the backslash, and that'll take you to the top. If you want to move to the bottom, uh, alt and the forward slash, and that'll take you to the bottom. And let me just go back up with the backslash 
and there we are. So alt and the backslash for to the for the beginning and alt and the forward slash for the end. All right. Now, um, if you want to look for a particular line line number, if that's how you code, which is uh, very, very important. So let's say I want to move to line number 11. All right. So to do that, I type in alt and G and that will ask me for the line number. All right. So you can also specify the column number if that's what you want. But for coding, you simply want your line number. So I can say 11 and hit enter and it's going to take me to the 11th line, which in this case is the int socket right over there. All right. So that is how to search for a particular line number. All right. Now, when we talk about uh, essentially uh, searching for particular words uh, and data. Uh, so if you're looking for a string, a string of data, we use the control uh, and W keystroke and we search. So let's say I'm looking for um, uh, let's say I'm looking for bash. All right. I can say bash and it's going to bring us uh, the results right over here. We have one bash here and the other one right over here. Now scrolling, you can use the Alt B and uh, the control. If you want to replace it, you can use the uh, control R. All right. So replacing data. All right. So replacing the word socket. So for example, if you were to do that, we essentially need to type in uh, Alt and R and that will essentially search. So so this in this case, uh, socket is selected. So we can say uh, we can say something like um, socket. We can replace it with socket and well, actually, that is what we searched for. So yeah, so let's just replace this socket right over here with socket. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask me if I want to replace this particular instance and I'm going to hit yes. And it's going to uh, it is essentially going to replace that particular instance. I'm going to hit yes right over here. And there we are. So it did replace that for us. All right. So that is how to essentially search and replace code. Um, now, when you're talking about uh, the other keys that you can use or the other key bindings that you can traditionally use, uh, those include various things like, for example, uh, using your tab key or indentation, uh, backspace or uh, just various other key bindings particular to Nano. What you can do is let me just move back here uh, and I'll move into the Nano folder that I did create right over here. So I'm going to say Nano file.txt I'm going to open that up and uh, so for example if I if uh, we're talking about page up and page down that is denoted by control y uh, and control v all right for page up and page down as you can see control y control v as follows uh, when you're talking about tab that is denoted by the control i command so if I just hit control i that's going to tab uh, that's if you are interested in the various uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts or the keystrokes that have been changed or have been adapted for nano all right. So if you want to do de delete files instead of uh, essentially, well, you can actually select them. We can use control D, for example, if I just hit control D, it's going to delete one simple as that. And you can go ahead and save that if you want. All right. So those are pretty much the other keystrokes that you will uh, find yourself uh, maybe using. But the traditional ones do work. For example, tabbing does work and you get the idea. So that is pretty much all of the basic uh, and advanced commands that you can use uh, when it comes down to nano. And hopefully these will increase your productivity with the tool. And these pretty much should encapsulate everything that you will ever find yourself using with Nano. All right. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.